Godox has gained support by offering comparable lights to Aperture at a fraction of the cost. Today we're going to be taking a look at the SL60W and trying to answer the question, is it possible to have a good light at such a low cost? Some lights adjust their brightness by turning on and off very, very quickly. It's so fast that the human eye can't actually see it, and so you interpret it as it being a little bit dimmer. This is one of the areas where Godox and the Aperture lights differ. Some people say that the Godox lights flicker at a lower power output, whereas Aperture lights don't have that problem at all. Because flicker is a function of brightness, once you get above a certain point, you don't have to worry about flicker anymore. This light is adjustable from 100% all the way down to 10%. Now some people complain that it doesn't go any lower than 10%, but you're not really going to be using it any lower than 10%. A lot of the times my footage gets grainy once I hit 10%, so I wouldn't recommend going much below that anyways. Now just because this light is dim at 10% does not mean it's not bright at 100%. This light has more than enough output to go through any modifiers or anything you throw at it. Now this light comes with a reflector dish that concentrates the light into a smaller area and just kind of makes that little area just a little bit brighter. I'm not really sure what the uses of these dishes are, so I'm not going to be able to go into much more detail than that. Along with this light, I bought a softbox and I can guarantee you this light is bright enough to be used with a softbox. The softbox I got even has two layers of diffusion and my light has no trouble going through it. In fact, I'm using it right now and the light is only set to 13%. Now, if you need to light a bigger area than what the softbox provides, you can always just take all of the modifiers off and bounce it off of a wall or a ceiling. That will fill up a room with quite a bit of light and it should light up the entire room unless it's a very large room. <laughs> so overall, it seems like a really great light. So far, I haven't noticed any kind of flickering problems with the unit I received at a lower output level, and then at a higher output level, it's more than powerful enough to go through modifiers. And because the SL60W has a Bowens mount, there are plenty of modifiers out there, and you can even use the same modifiers that are on aperture lights. So for under $200, you're getting a pretty bright light with a CRI of 95 plus and a Bowens mount. And you're really only running the risk of a little bit of flickering at lower outputs and potentially a little bit of fan noise. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. Anyway, I think that just about wraps it up for this video. If you have any thoughts about this light or what I should do in future videos, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed, leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.